I can uh, pull it up on YouTube. You could in uh, another screen. Just make sure you mute the uh, the volume. Shoot. Um, where I gotta find the YouTube link again. Uh, it's working right now, so we are live. Oh, okay. But um, I'm sending you the link, the YouTube link to the chat on the Zoom, so you should see the link right now. All right, everybody, welcome. This is Johnny Wu here with MDI. I'm here uh, doing, this is the 10 um, weekly interview that we done broadcast throughout the, um, the uh, during this pandemic time frame, And um, it's kind of cool and exciting. Uh, today we have a, a good friend of mine, very good friend of mine, and be helping me a lot. He is on screen, and his name is Keith Collins. He's a local filmmaker, director, editor, and also a stunt by chore uh, what choreographer, right? Coordinator for yes, <laughs> yes. Thank you for being being here. So anybody is um uh, on the um on the um, YouTube or Facebook, feel free to uh, start asking your question because it takes about twenty five minutes to. Uh, 20, 30 seconds for me to see it. So this way we can get it going. Um, Wayne, say hi, by the way. So hey, Wayne. would you mind say a few words about how you started everything so we could get the things going? Um, I got started um, doing fight choreography. Um, well, first I started doing shorts and then I actually helped on a project and was a stunt coordinator fight choreographer uh, called uh, Contract Redemptions. <laughs> and um, um, that was about 2012, 11, 2013. And um, after that, um, I believe I linked up with you um, and we uh, started, uh, I think the first one was Trace. Yeah. Trace. And then from there- we shot that in 2011. Was it? It might, it might've been earlier. Okay. It might've I, 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 might been earlier. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> it's just a whole bunch of uh, work and projects, right? Right. <laughs> right. Keep going. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, and then um, pretty much uh, from there, you know, I mean, I feel like it was history. Me and you worked on a lot of projects together. Um, a, a lot of um, fight scenes and I've been on other projects working with fight scenes. Um, short and features. And uh, finally, I was able to get a chance to work with you on my own feature, uh, Ma Maximilian, which eventually became uh, Assassin's Game. Yeah, this is very exciting. So you started uh, training martial arts when you were a kid, like two years old, right? Yes. Uh, with your father? Yes. So what was, uh, how was the process? Was it difficult or was it you had to do it or you, you can get away with it? Because, you know, when I started martial arts, I didn't want to get out of it. I hated it so much. Um. I didn't know better. Like everything was just normal. I thought the training was normal. So, you know, the things that he would have me do from standing in stances to punches and kicks, I thought it was just normal. That's the way it was, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, I didn't really think like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. It was like, oh, this is the way it is. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, it's a little bit different here. I hated it. everything I was doing. I just want to get out of it. You know, you know, because the father said you had to do whatever, and then if he does, you don't do it right, you, he will spank you and then make you do it. <laughs> <laughs> the old ways. Uh, so we have uh, Terry also on uh, YouTube, Nick's on YouTube, uh, Tyler's on YouTube right now, Wayne yeah. and Ronnie on Facebook. So we got hey, everybody. They are, they're, they're, they're all saying hi. I'm watching monitoring on Facebook right now and YouTube. I don't know how. There's about 40 people watching YouTube. That's a lot of people. Holy cow. Cool. So um, what is the most difficult project you have done in a fight sequence one? Uh, the most difficult. Um, I would probably say Wuxia part one. Uh, that was probably the most difficult because that was the first time I had to break up different styles into one movie. So it's like, this person does this style, this person does this style, this person does that style. And um, I'm used to sort of like, okay, everything is going to be like this or everything's going to be like that. So that was probably the toughest. toughest okay. one. That was actually a the little short film that we shot in one day. Kind of quick. <laughs> yeah. So Ronnie got a question. He wants to know where can he watch Assassin's Game? 
Assassin's Game. Um, that you will be able to watch it by June, I believe, 16th. That's when it's supposed to come out. Um, and it will be out on Amazon, iTunes, um, uh, what else? Uh, or DVD, it should be at Redbox. Um, but um, overall, like on your on demand, most of your on demand streaming services outside of like Netflix, I think is where it's going to be at first. Okay, you're freezing up a little bit, so hopefully, okay, now you're, you're moving again. Oh, okay, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> sometimes Wi Fi does that, it's it's all right. We got more people joining on Facebook right now, so kind of cool. Um, I also got a message. So, um, how do you start training people to be, for example, my civilian or assassin's game or any other fight sequences? How do you train the actors to make them uh, acclimated to the fight sequences? Um, like I'm a firm believer in using the time. So when I'm making a fight, I want to try to like take care or have our fight practices built before we actually turn on the camera. So that way the actors and actresses know exactly how they should move and the cameramen also know how they'll move because it's sort of a dance between, you know, cameramen and the uh, actors and actresses for the fight. And uh, from there, once they, you know, understand their moves and their timing, you know, and they practice it enough, it just becomes ingrained into their, their, you know, makeup at that point for the film. So fairly, you know, you, how long do you practice with them? Um, depends on the project. I mean, I've had some as short as, you know, two weeks and, but I, I prefer to have them for, you know, some months if I can. Yeah. And in our case, because they're independent films is, I mean, even if it's two months, it's really more like eight days because it's only like on weekends. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, but it's still enough time, you know what I mean? To work with them and get those movements and into their, you know, body as well as trying to, you know, work out any kinks. Right. So you're the you you you're also the director and the editor. So for like for example, Maximilian or Assassin's Game, you know, you train people to fight. You mm -hmm. have the script going the way that you want it to, and then uh, when you in production, uh, post production, editing, and the result, how did that differ from each other? Um, with Maximilian, um. Pretty much what would happen in that case, because when we were filming, we were also editing at the same time. So there are certain things that aren't in the script that are in the movie, because once I put, you know, whatever this was in the script together, I was like, oh, hey, something like this is missing to sort of put the, this piece of the puzzle together to make it flow better. So a lot of times, or like, I think I was fortunate enough to be able to film and edit at the same time and it really helped me sort of put the pieces of the together pieces of the puzzle together much easier okay. than um, you know filming all at once and then editing and how long it took you to finish the whole movie um uh, maximilian actually took time like the editing part if i were to tally together like the days of editing I mean, it probably took a month, but visual effects took months. Like the visual effects and the sound is what really took most of the time. Yeah, um, I can't imagine that, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of gunfire. It was a lot of people hitting each other. <laughs> it was, so it, it took, that took the most time. That, that took months, that took a lot of months. I mean, I was probably getting all that down close to when we actually showed it. Right. So Ronnie has another question here. He wanted to know who were the ro lead roles for your Assassin's Game? The lead roles? Yeah. Um, um, John, um, John, Dan uh, John Danug, he's a Maximilian. He's our main character. Um, uh, Hakeem Sharif, he's a uh, sage, his uh, wily sidekick. Um, that you eventually get to know and love throughout the movie. Um, Kim Root, she was X. Uh, Dan Leosh, he is Y. They're the married assassin couple. Uh, Ember Burns, she is Bunny. She's the mysterious ninja assassin. And Jin is a Jerry Sir. 
Um, and uh, we have the Masters with Stephen Haas, George Comer, and Matt Cain, who, you know, in, are, are the eventual villains of it. And uh, the main, main villain, um, Ernesto, um, he is our main villain, Ernesto Jam. Uh, he was our main villain in it. Is, um, and the Watcher was played by um, Damon Baloo. Cool, cool. And so what is what was the first project you did for your own uh, that had fight martial? My very first project, um, that was early, early on. I mean, it was it was a, like a, a action comedy called like Powder Donuts. Oh yeah, I remember seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was fun. That was fun. <laughs> okay. So did you guys have to train a lot for that, or it was just uh, it, how the how the idea came came about? Um, th that was during an actual a time where I was teaching self defense classes with my dad, and uh, I got uh, people in my class along with my friend um, Darius Peterson. Um, we were like, "Hey, wouldn't it be funny if we made like this super secret espionage thing where they're stealing some donuts or something, something stupid?" And then. Uh, we just, you know, I made these props and then uh, we went, we went for it. We bought some donuts and they tasted terrible too. They were not the best donuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you came out really good though. I mean, did, did you go anywhere like film festivals, winning awards? Um, and went to a couple film festivals and won a couple awards for like best uh, micro action film. Um, that was, that was the first like film we really like tried. You know what I mean? Uh, do something. Um, and I want to say the next film after that was sometime later called uh, Split Screen. Okay. And how did that go? And that one did pretty well at festivals. Um, that one was pretty much our old the video, old school video game play. Like guys are playing a video game and, you know, you're seeing all the action on, you know, screen. Um, cool. And then uh, after that, was Lions and Wolves. That one got far, right? That one actually yeah, got that, the TV and everything. Yeah, that one is the one that made it far. That was the one that ended up on uh, L Ray Network and um, it aired, um, it was on, a, on um, L Ray Network and it was on a Spectrum On Demand for like two, three years. Still still available on L, ne L Ray Network or they took it down? Um, I believe they finally took it down um, last year. Okay. Last year. All right, so I got Two questions here, one from Wayne. Wayne is actually one of our favorite guy in Tyler too. They always ask questions every time we have a thing <laughs> going on. So anybody else, if you guys need to ask questions, do so now. It takes about 20 to 30 seconds before I can see them. So the, the only food quicker you, you ask, the better for me. All right, Wayne asked this question. While using martial art, artists is better, many actors have no training. Any minimum shape or condition for actors to do action parts or can camera work and editing makes everyone looks good? Um, I'm sort of a firm believer in like, if the actor, if you want the actor to actually look good, they have to practice. I mean, um, if you notice when actors don't get the training, like they try to fix it in post and fixing it in post is a whole bunch of quick cuts uh, from multiple different angles so that you can't really see what they're doing. But people want to see what they're doing people like to see the action so if you i think actors training is the best the best way to present action you know so you I don't mean? you you prefer to be able to see the action than like born identity to like shaking like crazy right yeah i can't <laughs> i can't i can't take the shakiness i think that um and, it, and the crazy part is i don't understand why they did it because when you look at the fights they are really good it's just they chose to shake the camera and that, and that makes it even more furious. I think the director said he wanted the people to feel it, how the how the person would be there when they're there. But you know, the problem about that is, you know, martial artists, we see everything through our eye all the way from almost like behind here. I can feel things around here. Yeah. So, so the camera is only like two dimensional in, in the sense, in like a framing. Yeah. So I don't, I think that was a big mistake, but people love it because it's so unrecognized. Style. I mean, they do it with driving sequences, like shaking exactly. and, you know, quick cuts and, you know, everything. And I, I feel like that's, I mean, it sort of works for driving, but I still would prefer to see the driving overall. Yeah, exactly. 
So Tyler got this question. What movies do you admire for their fights choreography? Um, I mean, my number one fight choice always is Wheels on Mills uh, with Jackie Chan and Benny the Jet. Uh, that's probably one of my number one favorite fights. My second fight would be uh, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris in uh, Way of the Dragon. Uh, then I'd probably go with my third fight will probably be um, Donnie Yen uh, versus Colin Chow in um, Flashpoint. <laughs> um, and if I were to uh, say from there, like other fights that I admire would be like, you know, from Fist of Legend and, um, you know, like Jackie Chan's uh, Police Force, stuff like that. And then probably the most modern movie fight scenes that I've liked recently was Upgrade. Yeah, that was uh, very impressive. Like, the fights at Upgrade were like really good, but I guess they were impressive because they were, you know, supposed to be like moving because of AI and they moved like with precision and it was really cool to yeah. see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, totally, totally. All right, all the questions coming in now. So we got more questions for you. So which is good, because though I don't, I don't need to ask you, ask you a question I have to ask you. <laughs> uh, let's see, there's one here. Um, any advice for shooting an action film on a budget? Um, shooting an action film on a budget, uh, time is your currency. Use your time wisely. And, and I would treat, treat, treat your movie like a play um, and just rehearse, 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 rehearse. If you rehearse, it makes your life much easier when it comes to action. And that's, you know, for your actors and that's for your crew. So if your actors and your crew are, you know, in sync on those action sequences, you'll be good to go. Yeah. So I got one more here. Uh, let's see. Do you usually take actors and train to fight or take people with martial arts skill already? It is typically easier to have somebody with martial arts talent, but there's an exception to that rule. If you have dance experience, exactly, you typically will look amazing in a fight. You, well, you Amber, have... Amber doesn't know how to fight, but she knows how to dance. <laughs> and she's been uh, one of your lead, uh, supporting role on uh, Assassin's Game. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. So, so let's see what else in there. Well, uh, Ronnie said that he agreed with you about. Um, all the shaking and stuff. Uh, Wayne talked about how great this Flashpoint was and <laughs> Rolling Star film. Is that Terry? Upgrade is so good. That's why you said. Yeah, uh, Upgrade, man. That was a, a surprisingly good movie that I feel like nobody watches. But if somebody does watch it, they get excited over it. It's a really good movie. So I got to this question. Let's say uh, I'm an actor. I don't know any martial arts, but I'm so good. And then you want me to be in a movie to, to be one of the lead roles to my fight. So what would be the process of training me to become an actor or to be able to see good on camera? So usually the first thing I do with somebody who doesn't know how to do anything is to see what they can do. Um, and usually an actor can do something. So once you find out what that something is, then you start building their fights off of their strengths. And that's how I, that's how I try to make them look good. So if they're like, they're throwing punches good, they're, you know, displaying that they can sort of wrestle, I'm probably gonna make something out of that. You know what I mean? Instead of trying to force them to throw a kick. Okay. I remember when we were shooting Inner Cell, which is a martial comedy musical, now available on Amazon Prime for free. Uh, uh, Misha, he doesn't know any, he doesn't know how to uh, martial art. He yeah. cannot sing. <laughs> but now he's uh, doing a lot of, a lot of crazy rapping and uh, speak singing, singing and right. <laughs> doing really well. So inspired by inner, inner self. So you you trained that him with him like that way, right? With him and Jason when they had the fight sequence. Because the one that we did at Culture Garden was really good. I mean, that was yeah, really good. And what I was really what I was thinking, like, um, because you were when you explained to me what the situation was, I was like, okay, this is more Jackie Chan like. So I knew that all right, Misha can throw punches, Misha, Misha can block. So all we have to do is put him to a rhythm and he'll look good. And when you threw in the third person, which was Steven, you know, just in the way, yeah, that really added to that dance to make it, you know, work together. 
you know? So I think, like, like I said, Misha, I knew he could punch. I knew he could block. So I used it. And even with his kicks, it wasn't like they were bad. He just couldn't kick high. So I knew if I threw in maybe a kick here or there, it would be all right. Yeah, that's definitely. But I kind of got a question. Do you prefer to move? To, I'm sorry. Do you prefer to use moving cameras for fight sequencing or a combination of moving and stable cameras? Um, I probably say now I prefer to keep the cameras on the move. Um, I think that uh, by moving the camera dynamically with the fight puts you in the fight, not shaking it, but just, you know, he's going to move here. So you move it with him there, you know what I mean? Or he's going to grab, I want to move that with the grab, you know what I mean? Just to add little accent pieces within the fight. I, I think kinetic movement is really good with yeah. you know, fights. As long as you can see the fight sequences, not like in your face, right? Right. <laughs> so Laura, Laura Massey Klein, uh, she mentioned that uh, you help him, you help her in my movie Inner Self to to do to look like she know how to fight and was a blast. And that was a lot of training with Laura. I think we trained how many days, like three or four days before the day shoot. Yeah, yeah. Constantly to get her because she had no clue how to fight, no clue about nothing. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, she 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 pulled she pulled through on camera. Like she 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 did, uh, she did. She did the moves. Yeah. Once I gave her, like I said, it was like, what can she do? And then she executed. Yeah, definitely. So Wayne got more questions. Wayne said, uh, Keith, you seem to love horror and action films. Do you have a preference on genre? Uh, I don't know if I have a preference. I, I do know I, if, if I really love horror films. I don't know. I know where the love of horror films come from. It comes from my grandmother and my dad. We always watched horror films. So me growing up, that's all I did was watch horror and action. You know, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, or I'm watching, you know, Jason or Freddy Krueger, um, or Dracula. <laughs> you know, so it's just uh, horror movies. Oddly enough, are like home cooked soul food to me because that's what I watched growing up, just like a kung fu movie. <laughs> you like the newest, like the Saw trilogy, or the? Or um, mm-hmm. I'm not really a big fan of those. I'm more now. I realize I'm more of a big fan of like paranormal, supernatural type, right? You know, movies, uh, ghost oh, the guys. Yeah, stuff like that. The haunted house, like the Conjuring's. I like those. Um, yeah, I, I love the original Hellraisers. Yeah, that's so good. My name was too. I like those too. So, I got yeah. Ronnie. Uh, he got this good question. Do you work with actual footage, audio, or more of sound effects for fight scenes? Will I say that again? Do you work with actual footage audio? Also, basically, when you're shooting, you're using the audio footage, the audio from the footage on the set on the camera, or more of sound effects for fight sequences. Um, it's a mixture of both. Um, using some of you know the natural sounds that you do get, and then adding it, you know, sound effects in the proper places to either enhance uh, the hits or enhance a miss. You know what I mean? Um, I, I've found so far that that's probably the best. However, I have done just all sound effects, like depending on the you know, situation, if I didn't like the way the sound was coming out and I you know, completely done sound from the ground up. And I did get like with Maximilian, I, I did get help with like sound like uh, um, Jason, uh, Jason Wang, he really helped me um, work on the sound on um, the back end. Speaking of Jason Wayne, today's his birthday. Yes, happy birthday, Jason. Happy birthday, Jason. You're still you're getting very much closer to my age, pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> so he will be on uh he will come to on, on uh, I will be interviewing him on June 8th, which just happened to be okay. my birthday. So it's gonna be fun ah. to introduce him. So uh RGM had this question from YouTube. Do you have any advice for editing five scenes? That's a good one. Um when you, or at least for me, when I edit fight scenes, I do like two to three different things. Like when I'm shooting, number one, I shoot for the edit. So I sort of know exactly like what I'm seeing in terms of the fight scene. Like this, this, I want this shot to go here. I want this shot to go there. And then I also play around with speeds and dropping a frame here or there if I want to hit the look harder than it actually is. Um, that's usually like the things that I'll do to like sort of enhance like a fight. 
Um, and I never usually take the speed over like 15 percent. Um, so basically 115. Yeah, I usually don't go past that unless they're moving. They have to be moving like terribly slow in order, you know, and nine times out of 10, once you say action and they start fighting, they just start fighting. You know, they don't yeah, they yeah. don't check their speed. Okay, you know? that's cool. We got another question here from screenwriter MV. Uh, did you like the fighting in the raid redemption? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, part two, the kitchen fight is what is actually, I can't believe I even missed that fight. That was one of my favorite fights. Wow. The kitchen fight was, uh, it was one of my favorite fights. It was, it was extremely bloody and gruesome, but the fight itself was really, really good. I don't think I have seen the whole movie yet. I just seen pieces here and there. Only the fight yeah. scenes. There's a, a, like a lot of the fights in that movie are really good. Like uh, the Raid 2, um, they're just gruesome. Like yeah. part one is amazing too. I love part one in, in terms uh, as the movie as a whole. But part two actually becomes more of a crime job, drama. So I felt like they were purposely like trying to answer all the film critics about saying the first one didn't have a story, even though it was the story, you know. And then um, they decided to make that more of a crime drama with fights in it. And yeah. those fights were brutal. So brutal. you mentioned earlier before that you like uh, martial art and horror film. Have you seen the story of Ricky? Yes, I actually have that movie. You know that one? <laughs> <laughs> that's a movie. Uh, that's a movie that. Um, it's a classic. Guilty pleasure. It yeah. is a guilty pleasure, man. Like it's that's about, it's an insane movie. It's insane. <laughs> I imagine eventually want to do something like that, but I think that's a little bit too gory for so some of the audiences. I mean, part of me is like, is, is doing a movie like that is definitely if people love gore, that's the movie to watch. Yeah. If you like gore and you like kung fu, perfect Check movie. The story of the story yeah. of Ricky. It's the a, story it, of Ricky. Yeah. All right, Ricky. Wayne got more question here. Um, <laughs> let's see. That's actually a lot of question. I got like six different question back and back, back to back. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, there is a risk to actor with action. For low budget films, can you speak to risk, liability, and your recommendation on insurance, if any? Um, well, I would definitely say one of the things that when you're doing fight scenes or any stunt on a low budget film for that matter, is it's good to always have a medic or somebody with medical, you know what I mean, knowledge on your set. So that way if something goes wrong, you'll have somebody there um, you always want to take your proper precautions because, um, you know, if you're doing stunts, you want to have your pads if you need them. You want to have your mats. You want to plan for all of those things, your falls. You want to plan for those things. Um, and in terms of insurance, I've had insurance on, so far on every movie that I've been on because I've had a producer that's gotten the insurance. Um, they've gotten the insurance in two different ways. So um, I can't generally speak on it because I'm not knowledgeable on that part, but I know how to keep people safe in terms of the fights and the stunts. Yeah, to talk to mention about insurance, the uh, the one we did for the Assassin's Game, that mm -hmm. insurance actually covered for a stunt too. So uh, one of the, it's hard to get out, it's called the Inland, Inland Marines Insurance Coverage. So that is actually cover anything inside the land with accidental or stunt fight and so on. But sometimes they don't cover that, sometimes you have to do extra for stunt fight. So that's something you have to think about. I got more question here for you. Uh, Bernard is, uh, Bernard is online too. Hi, Bernard. To, are you inspired by anime for fight? And if so, which ones? Um, I'm inspired by anime more for their visual, their visuals more than the fights, even though the fights are like, usually epic um but uh, i have to say like most of the animes that i watch or that are in my head that come to mind are all like the classic like 90s ones like ninja scroll and you know uh, some of the 80s one like uh fist of the north star um wicked city uh eight man after huh akira akira yeah like visually i usually like look at where those come to mind when I think about when I'm shooting, you know? Right. There's a new one coming out right now, this on uh, a season three that we, you, I, I, we have, it's not available yet in the United States. 
is the one which I just showed show you the link, the Hita, Hitari, Hitari no Shita. Uh, the, the cast, you know, the one that have a whole bunch of Tai Chi movement is so crazy. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, that's really I, I good. just posted I mean, that's really good. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, Ronnie, have another question here. Multiple takes or single long shot without edit? For a fight? Is that, is that what he means? Um, I think it, it's based on your story. Uh, I think, like, whatever your story visually is calling for, that's what you sort of make the fight do. So like for Maximilian, I did uh, more shortcuts, but like for my new movie that I'm working on now, Rumble TV, I'm doing more long cuts because it's supposed to be reality television. Mm -hmm. So I think it really just depends on the project. What about Extraction? Do you like it? I enjoyed Extraction. I thought that was pretty, like, I thought it was a pretty cool action movie. Yeah. I mean, I watched it again. Yeah. Um, Do you like I, the fight sequence? Really, pretty impressive. The fight sequences were really good. I felt like um, it reminded me a lot of the raid, mm -hmm. in a, in a way. Um, it was just as brutal. It, I mean, they had the close quarters of John Wick. You know what I mean in terms of the gun tactics. I mean, I thought it was really, I thought it was really entertaining. I enjoyed it. I, I don't see how they're gonna do a part two, but hey. well, he didn't die, so but I know they they inferred oh, we him alive. We should have given away, right? <laughs> Unless somebody. Oh, sorry. Him. Spoiler. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> but I gotta tell you that Michael Lair, our friend, uh, he was a fight coordinator for that movie and he really did a really great job. Remember the yeah, scene where the, yeah, the, yeah, when uh, Chris kicked him and he rolled down the stairs? Yeah. That's him. Man, like, yeah. I I like like, I said, where's the pad? Where's the pad? How the heck he doesn't feel the pain? The, the fights are so stairs. brutal. Like, uh, tell, tell Michael Lear. Yeah, no. <laughs> really good job. Good job. Definitely. All right, uh, we got more question here. Oh, Kevin Taylor, say hey. Uh, hey. He wants to know when will you redo a rematch or a sequel between you and your dad? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have to ask my dad. See when he's ready to beat me up again. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I gotta, I gotta debate on if I want to take any more pain. That pain is real. That's not active. <laughs> uh, just just for five minutes, right? So <laughs> <laughs> All right, Taylor, uh, Taylor, Tyler has a question. What makes a film fight good for you? Um, uh, for me, because I'm, I typically turn off like realism in my mind because, uh, you know, most martial artists, as martial artists, we always look at me like, is this real? Is this technique? Will this technique work in real life? So I t tend to turn off that just for movies because you know, movies are for entertainment. So I, I, I typically like a good tempo and usually the more brutal it gets, the more I like it. <laughs> um, that's a, the best way I can explore. Like if I see some techniques where I'm like, ooh, that's, that was mean, you know what I mean? Like that's usually what I'm looking for, but tempo is usually like my thing. Like if it carries a little too slow, like they're they're fighting underwater in a sense, I, I don't like it. But the faster they go, the more that it, it seems like they're knowledgeable of fighting. It just usually makes me uh it may it catches my eye. Cool. So uh, Terry G uh, from Midnight Movie Podcast, he said he just wanted to do a shout out to you, Mr. Collins, have work having working with him in several films and watch him develop action scenes teach the actors and making it happen on set. I personally consider him the best I have had the pleasure of working with. You know what, Terry? You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, it's Terry. Okay. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's, <our friend>. so, <laughs> it's okay. You know what? By the way, Terry, don't forget, uh, winter, we're shooting our feature film, so I need you on set again. Uh, Alicia, say hi. Guess who just joined? Who? Young Denon. Okay. Okay. So John is there here, and John, you know, he's the one that the main actor, right, for yep. Assassin's Game. So I'm going to show a find a bunch of pictures um, that I put off on your Facebook page, and you can tell me about them, what what kind of set they were, and then what you were doing there. Okay. Don't have to be nervous because it's very nice. Can you see the picture? Oh yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little about this one. Okay. 
So that picture is uh, where I was designing a fight scene for contract redemption, uh, sort of a short, I believe, that he was making just before he went into the feature. And um, right here was how the assassin was going to take out one of the guys to knock him onto that uh, bench there and eventually kill him with the, uh, with the, the bar <laughs> on top. Um, this is also uh, Contract Redemptions. Um, this was a knife fight that uh, was going to take place uh, between one of the assassins and one of the uh, other like little girl assassins that were was being trained. There's Jeremy Davis there. He's yeah. the director of the Contract Redemption. Yep. Jeremy, he's the man. This is <laughs> this is the sword fight <laughs> for a uh, trace. <laughs> yeah, boy, that was a uh, that that was fun. <laughs> well, to let everybody know, uh, when we're shooting the fan film for Doctor Who Trace, all the weapons we use in the set in the movie, uh, forty-five minutes long movie, were all real and sharp. Yeah. So these two actors were actually rehearsing with the uh, scabbard on. Yeah. So this yeah. way they don't get to hurt each other because uh, when they were actually fighting, they had to take out, you know, they had to go toward each other. We yeah. did have a small accident there. Uh, when the sword slide down, actually accidentally cut Andrew, the guy in the right, his finger a little bit, and there was uh, some yeah. blood coming out. So. But it all turned out, tur it all turned out all right. Yes, it all turned out right. We do have a medic. We take good, took good care of him, and yep. uh, continue the set. Um, this was training for a short I did called Project Die Happy. So I was getting um, all the fighters in that one prepared for their fight sequences that they would have to do. So I trained them first. This was like their training warm up exercises before they got into their fight. That is Wusha. The first one. The first one. It was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, so one day that we had we had lots of snow and then all the snow melted away. I think because everybody's <laughs> fighting and then got themselves heated up. Yeah, uh, we ended up getting muddy instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, Ronnie was asking, have you had real fights in which you acted out as a choreographer and kicked some ass? This probably would be the one, right? <laughs> yeah. She said, is it, has there been real fights? In which you acted out as a choreographer and kicked some ass. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, yeah, this is probably the one. This is probably not, this, both Wusha movies and what? Trace are the only movies I I acted, acted in. And the rest, I, I stayed behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. That was, I was director of photography for, um, it was a drama. It was a drama. Um, gosh, darn it. I can't think of the name of the drama right now. Was End of the Row. Background? It's called End of the Row. Yeah, that's India. India was directing that. Yeah. Yeah, End of the Row. And, uh, that is... You know so. Inner self, where I was uh, showing, I was showing. Um, oh my gosh! Now my Donna mind. and uh, Terry. Yeah, I was showing Donna how she should end because she was supposed to be softer than uh, Terry. Yep. All right, so I'm typing out this on the group chat if you can see it. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one. Uh, see, you. that yeah, was one. for one of my horror movies, uh, Acquitted. Yeah, that was a hot, hot day. <laughs> so, you were directing, and you have a slider there too, right? Yeah, I was uh directing, that was Jerry. Um, that movie was pretty much about a vengeful ghost 
But yeah, it was that one was a fun, fun piece. I got to work with uh Ron and everybody for that too. Amber. Now this is Maximilian. So we're training here. Um that's a watcher, that's uh Damon Ballou, uh, training for his disarm techniques for uh Maximilian in the movie. That's also Maximilian. That was I, I want to say that was our, was that our first day? Yeah, I think so. That was our first day um, at the office, um, all acting. It was a, a very smooth day. Yep. And that is the logo for the new movie that I'm working on currently um, called, called Rumble TV. That'll, tell, uh, tell us a little about the Rumble TV. So Rumble TV was a idea that um, had come to me uh, from a writer filmmaker, uh, Marcel Dorsey. And we had talked, I mean, it probably was now, it, it was about 2000 and maybe like two. We had talked about this concept of doing a reality show that was based off of people fighting each other. And we didn't really have the means to do it then. And now, um, you know, with technology and, you know, how reality television has almost bled into everything, you know, to the point where just people at home are, you know, making something and people are watching it. It just felt like now is the time we could, we could actually make this movie. So the movie is a, a satirical uh, com action comedy about uh, one guy who is in a uh, reality show where anybody who registers with the network can challenge him anywhere, anytime by presenting a fight card. And if he makes it through the season without getting knocked out, he gets $30 million. And anybody who beats him gets half that. So it's uh, a lot of people just coming at him to fight. And he's like a, a marked man throughout this whole series. So it's just a lot of hijinks and, you know, fight scenes. Cool. So when you, when do you have an idea when you have to be had this done? Since now that we are waiting for going back to <laughs> well, normal? Our, our plan is to go back into production in June. So I'm hoping that, you know, we'll have production done um, sometime, you know, by the end of July. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. And then you're busy again for another project. Yep. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to show the trailer for the official trailer for Assassin's Game. And before I do that, you would like to tell people about a little bit about the storyline, and then we can do some question about the project too. So Assassin's Game is about a assassin named Maximilian. He's a part of a assassin team called the Shadows. And he and his gang are put into uh, battle royale sorts to kill each other. Um, and really it's a, 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 a matter of who's gonna make it out alive. Okay, so we're gonna show the video. You know, there's a weird buzzing noise throughout the whole thing. So, that's <laughs> weird. Uh. I'm gonna make this a big screen and then we'll play it out. Hello, Shadows. I've called you here tonight for a very important session. One that might be your last. You will have three rounds that you will have to survive. Round one will be against the guards you see here tonight. Round two, you will have to face off against each other. The last man or woman wins. Sorry that it has to be this way. But one of you have left me with no choice. What did he mean one of us left me no choice? There's a mole amongst you. Trust only your instincts to survive. Uh, you see, I told you. That could have been us. Target are 
shadows. Why do you want them dead? Do your own team. Looks good. <laughs> Did it look good over there? Yeah. All right, so it's coming out in June, what, 16th? 16th. Uh, okay, so we got the, that's a Monday. That's a Monday. Hold on, let me make sure. Was it? No, it's Tuesday. June 16th. You sure? Yeah, it's a Tuesday. Because Monday is June 8th. So, okay, yeah, you're right. It's eight days later. So, Tuesday. Okay. Okay, cool. So, um, tell us how you develop the story and everything because, you know. Um, it honestly was a story I wrote in like 2007 as like a 13 page script. And then um, the reason it came back about is uh, I had, was offered to be in a reality show. Um, and they asked me, could I write a script uh, that could be on their show? And I was like, well, yeah, I guess I could. And then I wrote it in about two weeks. And then, um, I pretty much elongated what the story was and I made changes to it. And um, after, you know, I went through that whole like process of getting ready to be on a reality show, I ended up not being on a reality show. And <laughs> I was like, well, now I have this script. <laughs> and and then that's when I had, uh, came to you and was like, hey, do you think we could make this? And uh, you're like, yeah, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you, it, it was easy to do, right? <laughs> in, in in the long run, yeah, it didn't feel easy at first. <laughs> but you, you you got to learn how to put it together, so that's always good. So um, yeah. we got a question from Ron George. He wants to know uh, what star are you the most proud of? And uh, Scott Brush should say hi. Wait, so what star am I the most proud of, man? Uh, yeah, Scott Brosha, say hi. Oh, hi, Scott. <laughs> but uh, Ron wanted want to know what's what's done. Are you the most proud of? Um, I went through a table uh, for a, a, a action film called Bust. Um, Peter Moran was the director. I think that was like the most fun stunt I've like had. It hurt later, but when it happened. I felt great. <laughs> I remember you mentioned something like that when we shooting Wu Sha Two, which is coming out as an Immortal Combat, mm -hmm. the last fight sequence. I mean, the couple of days later, you were like in sore and couldn't move. Yeah, like the day of, I'm always fine. It's always yeah. like a day or two later, all of a sudden, I'm feeling everything. <laughs> so when asked this question, it's probably a good idea for you to explain a little bit. Uh, why does music, the music on the trailer, is different? Um, good question. I mean, like, uh, I guess it's one of those things that is went through the process through the distributor and they changed the music. They even re-edited the, the whole thing, right? Huh? They re-edited the whole trailer. Yeah, they re-edited the whole trailer. So they, you know, put their, you know, put the music, you know, put their music and everything else, which, I mean, I think the trailer was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I saw on, uh, on the uh, uh, YouTube channel, you have about 60 of a like so far. Nobody had disliked the, the trailer. Oh, wow. So oh, it's yeah. good. It is good. Yeah. So Ronnie got another question here. How do you mentally prepare someone for fighting same scenes? And by the way, that was an amazing trailer. Oh, thank you. Um, really, um, with them practicing over and over, they sort of prepare themselves mentally. Like the very first thing I usually have actors do before we even start fighting is falling. Cause I want them to not be scared, uh, but, you know, to take a fall. So I teach them how to properly fall. And, you know, once you get over falling, you sort of take everything, you, you sort of attack everything else. So that's usually like my first thing to get them understanding falling is not as bad as it seems. Okay. 
So we have another 12 minutes before we had to close this up. So if you have any questions, you know, this is the time to throw in there. I think I should, sh I, I think I want to show the first trailer you made too for Maximilian, because okay. this way they can, they can see the difference between both, both either one. Uh, but we do have a question here uh, from Wayne. Is there a style of choreography fight that you have not seen or been able to bring to film, uh, but want to do it in the future? Um. I, I will probably say at some point, and I'm hoping actually with this next project, I will be able to do it, is bring something a lot, uh, uh, that's like a love letter to Jackie Chan. Mm. That's sort of what I like to like do in terms of a fight scene, um, do something where, you know, we're using objects, we're, you know, using acrobats, you know, acrobatics and things of that nature. Cause I really haven't, I only got really a taste of doing it once before. And I like to do something bigger like that. Yeah, you're gonna be working with wire work too. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Outdoor. Oh, that'll be a little harder. So, right. Mr. Mr. Brushes asked this question: How are you practicing during the shuttle at home time through the Zoom, FaceTime? He he said, "How are we gonna practice?" Yeah, how do you practice doing the doing this pandemic time? Um, where I am suggesting now, uh, we're probably going to start doing like this sort of like a zoom meeting and trying to, you know, practice this, uh, you know, social distance and see how that actually works until we can get back together and have everybody, you know, comfortable. Okay. So I'm going to share the first trailer that was made before they changed the name to Assassin's Game. And you guys can enjoy this. Any question you have? Post it up there. I can see it. I can ask a question afterwards. It has been good to you and your team. We built something extraordinary. What's wrong, sir? It's a pill that one of our shadows is shady. The real question. What are you going to do about it? There's only one solution. Eliminate the problem. It's about damn time. <laughs> <laughs> you will have three rounds that you will have to survive. Survive, meaning be the last one alive. All doors are sealed and guarded heavily. You will not be able to escape. The last man or woman who makes it to my office wins. Round one begins now. to watch we ask why then what what if we don't like the answer So uh, for everybody who's watching this, John is actually on um, chatting with, with us on Facebook. You know, so he's the guy who's uh, with the glasses on the trailer here that you can recognize. Oops, let me close that up. up. Uh, Ron, John, have a question. Any plans to do a feature film out of Care World? <laughs> hey, um, a couple of people asked me about that, uh, Kill World. I would like to do something with Kill World uh, as a feature film. Um, especially because I did like the idea of it, though. So, and Kill World, and for everybody who doesn't know what Kill World is, it, it was a short film we all did together on the 48-hour film project. I believe it was the horror one, the horror 48-hour. So, yeah, it was, uh, it, 
it was a very fun project. <laughs> so Carewell is called J Crew Carewell Carewell Well 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 Wow. <laughs> uh, you can actually see an Amazon Prime. Uh, it's free too, so it's there. So I guess uh, if we're gonna do that, uh, everybody want to come back to do this. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe something to think about after after we help out Jason, you know, next year. Right. No, most definitely. Yeah. Uh, Rolling Stop Films asking, are you a fan of the old Kung Fu films, like the Shaw, Shaw Brothers films? Yes. Um, I mean, that's sort of where it all starts. Uh, probably my favorite, if I were to really think hard of my favorite of theirs still to this day, or just older Kung Fu movies in general, is uh, Heroes of the East. I don't know what it was about that movie that I just like absolutely love. So let's see, all the things I type was only came out to YouTube, but now on Facebook. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> so apparently uh, Wayne likes Kill, Kill World. He says one is the most favorite memory on set. <laughs> I felt so bad because uh, all I remember from Kill World is his daughter not being happy <laughs> about his death and that. <laughs> and I was yeah. I felt so bad. <laughs> it was it was it was crazy. I mean, Wayne has so many so many so little time to put so such a crazy stuff together. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, okay, I, I guess later I can post it on the Facebook that people know about the movie Assassin's Game coming in June 18. 16. 16, sorry, June 8, 16. Uh, but available on Amazon, iTunes, maybe on the, all the stores. On you, um, it's uh, Xbox, you know, Xbox, uh, PSN, it'll be there too. Yeah. And thank you, Scott. We'll beat you up eventually. So you, for sure, Scott Bridger wants to be beat up. So. <laughs> I thank you again, Keith, to being here with me. You know, uh, I always enjoy having you around. You're just yes. always uh, lots of fun. Yeah, fun. And you know, your birthday's coming up too, so I had to make sure that you have your birthday wishes. Happy birthday, yeah. June first, right? Yep, June first. Yep. And so you everybody know that. Make sure that I bombard his Facebook page like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks again, everybody, for watching this. If you guys want to, uh, next Monday we're we'll talking with Pauline uh, about women in film. So join and ask her questions. So that'd be great. And see you guys next time. Thanks again, Keith. Take care. See ya. And let me see how to turn this off again. <laughs>